this is kind of the only show where we can be as cheesy as possible and it be, you know, okay. The Marvels, I didn't answer your question. But yeah, it was, it was very different. I ha we had a much bigger team and uh, I, you're right, I can't say anything, sorry. <laughs> So you are a legitimate fan of, of Marvel, just of the comics, of the MCU. What's a Kamala moment from the comics that really resonates with you and maybe even stuck with you while you were filming the show? There's a lot. Just just her her moment with Wolverine when they were when they were fighting together against crocodiles in the sewers of Jersey City. Wolverine's losing his healing ability and Kamala's piggybacking him and uh, she's like asking him about it and he and, and why he lost his healing ability. He's like, listen, the only power that's worth snot is the power to get up after you fall down. Everything else, all the flashier, the fancier powers, that's just extra. And us changing our powers for, for, for the MCU, it just really hit close to home and that, that line just means so much because it really is not about the powers or the costumes or, or any of that. It's it's about character and about the humanity that these characters bring and, and just their moral code, the why they fight and their motivations. And that's what makes them a hero and that's what makes them a relat relatable. And so I, I, I really love that moment and it was really sweet. And just seeing Wolverine on Kamala's back yeah. This show wastes no time in establishing that Bruno is a very gifted young man. He's obviously very tech, tech savvy. Yeah. And, and there are a number of other young, very um, intelligent characters in the MCU as well. Yeah. I'm curious, in your mind, where does Bruno stack up with the uh, with the other young minds of the MCU? Like, is he on Peter Parker or Shuri's level? Like, I, he, he, he definitely is a thousand percent. Um, I can't say too much about what happens in the show, but no, his, his IQ is 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 extremely high. I um, mean, he is right. Even he might be a little above. Who knows? But uh, I'm not trying to start a competition. But no, he's, he's a very smart, young individual. Yasmin, I love Nakia. And I love the relationship between her and Kamala. It's just, it's so sweet. It's so authentic. And you guys have some great scenes together. I'm curious, like, how did you and Amon go about building that kind of rapport? And is there any scene in particular that really resonates with you? Yeah, well, I mean, it was so so easy with Iman. Um, a lot of the scenes that you you know see us talking in is exactly how we would talk in real life, and I think that's what made it feel so natural and genuine. Um, definitely, the scene in the bathroom was hit home for me. Um, it was a super collaborative effort in creating that monologue and that dialogue, um, and making you know reimagining Nakia to be mixed Lebanese American, and that's you know how I grew up, and you know being able to just give a, a short synopsis of, of that experience growing up hit so close to home for me and I mean it, like literally hit home for me I it's my experience but um, it was really really lovely and I'm so proud to be able to, to tell that story what do you think an older sibling does for for a hero what is what do you think the presence of an older sibling does for a character like Kamala I think the older sibling of a superhero would make them second guess their decisions just to take a step back and recalibrate their their de decision making process because I, I feel like older siblings are always challenging their younger siblings um, just so they can have a new point of view or perspective and and I think that I hope that that's what Amir does for Kamala that's the 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 thing with uh, you know siblings uh, second generation siblings to first uh, generation immigrant parents is like we get each other yeah and we have to have each other's back because well said. they don't necessarily get us well so you know we have to kind of tag team to make them understand that a lot of these things that we're doing you might find them to be not normal but for us and people like us they are normal uh, Zenobia, you have some great scenes with Iman. Like, I love, first of all, the mother-daughter dynamic, I buy it immediately. Like, you're so, these intense, very personal moments. I'm curious, what was it like to actually film those scenes? And was there one in particular that really resonated with you personally? Yeah, the, Iman and I have ha had been fortunate enough to have some wonderful scenes, not just in the two episodes that you've seen. Um, I, I can't tell you my favorite scene because you may not have seen it yet. Um, but um, I think that we were just really, I think that she it was her first time ever acting and I've been doing this for 35 years. 
So I was very cognizant of that fact, but she hit the ground running. I didn't have to, you know, do anything to um, help her, uh, except be there for her in the scene. And I think that she learned very quickly that that's what she had to do in, in turn. And I think we, we did a very, we were very successful in doing that for each other, very respectfully. We were always there for each other, whether coverage was on her or me, we were both very consistent with each other. And so every time one new, mo new scene came, it deepened and deepened. And uh, I hope that, yeah, I hope that that mother-daughter dynamic really comes through because of that. Eric, like, may I take this opportunity on your platform to, uh, to tell uh, Zenobia, my, who's my on-screen wife, that she has done such a stellar job. Oh. I mean, she's fantastic. The, the, the flavor that she's got to this character is just so, so spot on. I mean, and being a South Asian, coming from that region, I can tell you she's hit the nail. She's just so good. Oh, Rish, I want to I want to say I love Kamran as well. And one thing he obviously he's very surprising because I mean, it's his character takes a very interesting turn. Obviously, what happens at the end of episode two. Now, I'm cur now, I know you can't say much, but I am curious as to like, what was your reaction to reading, to learning of that twist for the first time? And how does it feel that you're able to kind of subvert this quote unquote traditional love interest kind of role? Yeah, I mean, I, I love that it's not the typical love interest type of role. And I think it's always interesting when you come in to a role and you're playing someone who is a bit more mysterious and has a couple more layers to it. And I think that it's just been a really fun process. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how much I can say about where it's going to go, but um, it's definitely been uh, the first episode that I come in. I, I love that stuff. I mean, all of the date stuff and him just getting to know Kamala is, is really sweet. I love Yusuf so much. And with this role, you join a long line of great TV dads. I grew up loving sitcoms and I love TV dads. Thank you. That's so, that's so sweet. And I want to ask, what is it like to actually just add to that proud proud, you know, tradition? And was there any character or just any person you knew personally that you channeled when uh, playing this role? No, it's I, I was telling some other people uh, recently that uh, uh, I've unfortunately not had a dad growing up. He passed when I was just nine months old. So I don't know. I've grown up uh, with uh, three sisters and my mother. So I'm, I'm more uh, in tune with uh, women. But um, and I'm not married. I don't have a kid. So I don't have any uh, uh, benchmarking of what a dad would be unless I see my friends' dads and things like that. But I guess what I portray as a, a dad when I'm uh, acting is what I'd, what I'd expect my dad to have been or what I would have liked to be as a dad. So it comes very naturally. It comes from the heart. I don't have to think about it. So people say, was that challenging since you don't have a dad? But no, actually it came from the heart. Kamal is coming in at a time where a lot of younger heroes are coming into the MCU here in phase four. And with that, there's speculation amongst the fans. They think this could be leading to some kind of team up or somewhat. Now that's all conjecture at this point, but I'm curious as a fan, what other young heroes would you like to see Kamala team up with going forward? I mean, like for you, what is your dream lineup for Young Avengers or Champions? Ooh, okay, perfect. Ironheart, easy. Kate Bishop, why not? Spider-Man, I feel like that'd be fun. America Chavez. Let's bring in Sprite from Eternals. No one talks about her. I think she's great. And uh, yeah, she's, she's human now. She can age. I guess she's still young. That movie confuses me sometimes. <laughs> Hot take. Uh, yeah. Now, without going into specifics, what do you think is the episode that's going to generate the biggest response? What do you think is going to generate the game-changing gasp? Here's the thing. I know exactly which episode it's going to be. But then something else happens, and then it might be that episode. I will. I can't tell you which episode it'll be. I will say there's a moment in the last episode that, like, when I realized what we were doing and that we were able to do this, like, it's a small moment. It's a tiny, tiny thing. It's not even an end credit scene. It's a tiny little moment. And, like, like I just was weeping with joy and, like, oh, my God, my whole world was turned upside down with that what's happening so i'll say that um but that's not even the episode that i think is going to be the game changer so every single one of them is a game changer in my opinion and uh one of the things i love about the show as well it's also it's not just a celebration of kamala and her corner of the mcu it's kind of a celebration of just the mcu in general just everything that makes it what it is and i was curious the avengers con sequence is obviously one of the biggest i'm curious with so many 
Easter eggs and references throughout the entire series. For you and the writers, was there anything in the show that anything that actually didn't make the cut in terms of like an, an Easter egg or a reference or yes. even maybe a cameo? Like so, what? so many things did not make the cut in AvengerCon. There were so many things because we had so much B-roll and amazing things that was happening in AvengerCon that I feel like there's really going to be, it was fun for people to see. So I'm sure we'll get a, a way to have some behind the scenes footage and stuff get get put, put out there. But yeah, um, just like seeing a little bit more detail of what was actually there. Our production designer, Chris Glass, did such a great job with bringing AvengerCon to life and having like a heightened version of Comic-Con. So um, yeah, you just, you need to walk physically around AvengerCon to really experience it. It was like a full size convention where we shot it. It was awesome. Yeah, so AvengerCon was the beginning with the coolest set we've ever been on. It was, you know, we were fanboying, taking selfies all the time and, and, and playing with all the toys and, and, and all that. And, and the, the producer had to grab us and focus us on the directing. So that was pretty amazing. But yeah, it's designing that with our uh, DP, Robrecht Havard, Belgian DP, that we, we, we did Bad Boys for Life prior to that. And, uh, and Nurdin Ahali, our VFX supervisor, and Chris Glass, the, 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 the production designer, we all came, we had that big set and we were like, okay, how do we make Make a big action set piece that is still true to the character and still tells a story, and um, and we did a lot of previews. You know, and basically the whole set was or the whole action scene was already CGI'd really roughly with storyboards and all of that uh, months in advance. And uh, and we added stuff that was not in the script, like you know the big head of Ant Man falling and rolling over to destruction as if it was Indiana Jones. That is something that we came up in a brainstorm together with Chris Glass. So so it was great fun to to have so much freedom uh, into that scene. Sequence, and uh, we hope that it, it has been memorable. One of the things I love about this show is just that it does just engulf us in, you know, Islamic Muslim culture, and it's and I really appreciate that. I'm sure the vast majority of viewers um, appreciate it. As I want to get ask each every one of you, I mean, what was an aspect of the culture that you were really excited for the show to actually put on to portray? Everything, because this community is so rich, so diverse, and to to show it in these small little things, you know whether it's the mosque scene or whether it's a wedding uh, ritual or whether it's a, a, a festival celebration. It's just so beautiful. So it's not wanting to shout from the rooftops. It's just saying, here's a part of it, you know? Here's a slice of life from their, uh, from their life. It's just so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, for me, it was, it was the music. Mm. Oh, of course, yeah. The music plays a huge role in, in the South Pakistani, Asian. Pakistani. Yeah, South and how, Asian we, how we grew up. Just like yeah. what we heard our parents listening Very to. Very representative. And, and yeah, this, this show does a really good job of uh, showcasing old music. And in new modern music that are, you know, South Asian or, or Pakistani. But also, like, let's be honest, we live in a very racist country. And I would love for people to, like Mohan was saying, see the Eid festival or see them going to mosque and say, oh, yeah, we also go to church. We worship. Oh, we have Christmas. We have Easter. Take it down. Take the temperature down on this. All the all the misconceptions about the Muslim experience. That would be lovely. What was important to us was making sure that Kamala's, you know, cultural and religious identity was really um, at the the forefront of the show in a lot of ways, but really very much nestled in the background, if that makes sense. Like it was a part of her everyday life. It wasn't necessarily something we were trying to lecture people on. We just wanted to sort of, you know, hear the voices of her community, see the many different kinds of, of sounds and, um, sorry, see the many different kinds of like textures and colors that really make uh, her community what it is. And, you know, obviously for me, you know, characters like Sheikh Abdullah were really important and um, the, the, the setting of the, of the mosque was in incredibly important and also just making sure that her, uh, the Khan house itself like felt very authentic and real to a family. So a lot of cultural touchstones that I think were in intentional and that we tried to make feel as authentic as possible. I mean, there were cultural consultants on the film throughout the whole process from prep to shoot to finishing. So, so during prep, we talked to the cultural consultants and they were very collaborative with us. They weren't just people that were saying, no, that's right. Yes, this is right. They were, they had input. They had creative input, as did, you know, every Muslim voice on the show. Sana, starting with, from Sana, Adil and Bilal, the cast, you know, everyone on the cast. You know, everyone would sweep through these sets and make sure that they felt authentic to them to at least their sense of their own experience. Obviously, the Muslim experience is not 
a monolith, but we wanted to get as specific as possible with this show in order to hopefully be universal, you know. The way we chose to go with Eid is that like we were we were, you know, given some references. There were some ideas of like small things that might be there, food stands, lots of food stands, that's what we were told. <laughs> um, some crafts maybe sold here and there, maybe some face painting. But we took all of those ideas and definitely dialed it up like a Ferris wheel, like, you know, like everything that we had there was a little bit amped up from necessarily the template we were given, and that was in order to, you know, give the show, stay true to the show's kind of vivid, bright, fantastical space. So we kind of made it feel like a little bit of a carnival, and I think everyone had a great time that day. <laughs> if you're able to continue going through the MCU, what's a character, an existing MCU character, that you'd love your character to mix it up with? I want to hear from each and every one of you. I, I already have mine. Reed, Reed Richards would be, I think, really cool, because they're both very, very smart, and I think it would be amazing. Yeah. Went to soldier. I feel like Kamran could learn a thing or two. Uh, normally, I'd say Shuri, 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 because they're both, you know, girl bosses. Um, but I kind of want to say Miles Morales. I think that would be a really fun interaction. Stunt work comes with the uh, territory when it comes to the MCU, and you do a lot here. I'm curious, um, how in how did you take to that? How intense was it? And also, how and how did it compare to what you had? Without getting into specifics, how did it compare to what you have to do for the Marvels? It, it was very physically demanding, but um, my, my stunt double is just the, the most wonderful human, and, and we were really working together and kind of creating Kamala's fighting style because this is so new, and, and we have so much freedom to play with and do whatever we wanted, and because of that, everything that we established in this TV show is going to be canon for the rest of the MCU, so we had to be really careful <laughs> about um, you know the physicality and, and, and the types of uh, movements we would do with the powers. So honestly, it was just fun, and we realized, you know, she's not a fighter she's a 16 year old kid who loves the avengers so she's probably copying everything she sees so we incorporated like a lot of fun black widow poses and and captain marvel poses and that just kept it really lighthearted because this is kind of the only show where we can be as cheesy as possible and it'd be you know okay so yeah and what for else? the marvels i didn't answer your question but yeah it was it was very different i had we had a much bigger team and uh, i you're right i can't say anything Sorry. You're introducing Kamala Khan and then you're setting her up and just establishing her world. But of course, we already know that she's she'll next be going to the Marvels. I'm curious and with that, obviously, without getting this to specific spoilers, how much create how much collaboration was there between you all and the team at the Marvels in terms of just making sure that her start made sense and that her character remained consistent going into that film? So I will tell you this, and it's absolutely true. I know absolutely nothing about what happens in that movie. <laughs> so the one thing that I did know that everybody knew at the time was that this mo movie was happening. It was called The Marvels. It was going to happen. And I knew that I was starting with my girl Kamala on day one. She's the teenage girl in Jersey City. She doesn't have any powers. So I knew in the back of my head, in the breaking of this character arc, I'm going to get her from teenage girl, no powers, to whatever the hell is happening in The Marvels at the end of the show, right? So that was really clear and like, um, what that meant for me and my approach to that and certainly guidance in many ways by the team at Marvel um, to kind of make sure I was in the right headspace without telling me any spoilers because oh my god I love to talk um, They, uh, I knew that I had to get her there I needed to get her match ready for whatever was going to happen next so on that end there is that and by the time the create and timing wise we were we were before um, we were further along in the creative process than the Marvels were and the Marvels is obviously it's not just Kamal Khan and the Marvels there are other Marvels in that uh, in that movie so um, there are loads of other pieces that I have genuinely no idea what was going with those, those people certainly I didn't know at the time but creatively by the time we had all of our scripts for the six episodes I'm allowed to say that yes that's public knowledge or by the time we had all our scripts for the six episodes um, that those were available to them. Those are available for, to the team on um, the Marvel. So they had our scripts before they were even shot. They were reading them. So yeah, they they were aware of what we were doing. Kamal's background, her voice, how she carries herself, and who she becomes by the end of our show. There's so much to love about all of your characters. But what do you think is the most important thing to know about each of your characters? I think for Bruno, I mean, like he his loyalty to Kamala is is something that you know I worked really hard on you know his his caring nature for her he's very uh, protective as, as you see when you know this hot British man gets out of the pool he seems a little on edge and he's like who is this guy coming to my best friend so you know I think I think hopefully some uh, fans will take away that you know he's, he's very empathetic and, and caring for Kamala I mean I, I think the thing I want people to take away from Naki and the thing that I admire most is is you know just how vocal she is and how 
not afraid to to share her opinion and, and speak her mind she is and also just how playful she is especially with teasing you know bruno and also nakia with or not yet, uh, and also, you know, Kamala with all of her drama. Um, for me, I think Kamran acts as a foil for Kamala throughout the season, and there's a couple of parallels between their relationships with their families. And I want fans to realize that Kamran is starting to feel at home around her when they first meet, and that's really important. I'm a superhero.